What's going on, wrestling family? Welcome back to the channel. So what we got here is 10 WWE returns that were doomed from the start. So when the ink dried on their contract, they had zero chance of survival. Now, before we get started, hit that subscribe button. Let's find out who these wrestlers are and let's have some fun, all right? Let's get into this. When a wrestler returns to WWE, sometimes the writing's on the wall from the moment they make the return entrance. Either the fans have zero Lord interest Tensai. in seeing that respective wrestler return to the company, or WWE have a bold yet unimaginative plan for the returning talent, which is going to turn the fans completely against them. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 WWE oh, returns that would fast be from the start. This so we can get into the nitty gritty, guys. But Nash. Kevin yeah, Nash has made several WWE returns that was throughout his career, and his return in 2003 was arguably his most infamous. Nash returned on Raw as a new top babyface on the brand, and he was instantly thrown into a feud with Triple H over the world title. On paper, Nash vs. The Game had true potential, Not as a face, there was a though. ton of established history there, but sadly, fans had no interest in seeing Nash in this role. Whilst yeah. he no doubt still had something to offer, it just wasn't what the fans wanted to see at the time, especially when SmackDown had the likes of Brock Lesnar. Yo, Kirk. yo, 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 really quick. If I'm Kurt Angle and a sweaty Brock Lesnar get in my face like this, his lips touch my lip. At that point, especially, especially in the past year, we saw what he said about Bobby Lashley. Remember, he was like, I was in my bed with my wife for 12 hours and all I could think about is Bobby Lashley. So knowing all of that, okay? If Brock Lesnar would have did this, a sweaty Brock Lesnar lips would have touched my lips. I would have texted my family, like, yo, I'm about to be on TV, guys, on another channel. I'm going out to the parking lot, and I'm going to have to pop the trunk, okay? I'm going to have to pop the trunk because I'm not going to win a fair fade with Brock Lesnar's. You, nobody's winning that fight. So I'm going to have to pop the trunk, get out some boxing gloves, and have a safe boxing match with Brock Lesnar, okay? <laughs> Just keep everything safe, which I thought I was going to say. Everything don't have to be violent. That's what's wrong with the world. <laughs> Angle putting on in-ring classics on what seemed like a weekly basis. Nash also returned to the company for a brief stint in 2011. Nash would return yet again at the 2011 SummerSlam pay-per-view and he would enter into a weird program with CM Punk that was yeah, that was strange. a matchup. However, Nash was eventually pulled from the match and WWE went in a different direction and instead Nash was once again feuding with Triple H. Nash will always be a pro wrestling legend, but there's no denying that his numerous WWE returns have failed to hit the mark. Number 9. Test All right, In Peter 2006, Tess. WWE decided to give former Intercontinental Champion Test another shot in the company. Test would join the dreaded ECW brand and upon his return, it was apparent that he had put on a considerable amount of muscle and he looked to be in truly insane shape. Mm -hmm. The problem with Test returning was that it wasn't what ECW fans wanted. The ECW faithful ultimately didn't want a semi-successful star from the Attitude Era on the revamped roster. The test return was doomed to fail, and to nobody's surprise, he received little to no reaction as he returned without a fleshed out character and it wasn't before long that he was completely lost in the shuffle. Number 8. Goldberg Upon returning to WWE in 2016, Goldberg was welcomed back with open arms. He had one match against Brock Lesnar at the Survivor Series event, and this was presented as if it was going to be his farewell matchup in pro wrestling. However, just a few short months later, Goldberg returned yet again, and this time, he was competing for the world title. Goldberg wrestled Kevin Owens at the 2017 Fastlane event, and WWE and for whatever reason but Goldberg to squash the young star. Yeah, this meant that, that Goldberg was, was now Universal Champion, and this was something that fans really didn't want. These returns continued to happen for the next several years and WWE have booked something similar when Goldberg defeated The Fiend in 2020 to once again win the Universal title. These returns Why did they even have this match? the relationship between Goldberg and the fans, and it's likely to never recover. Number 7. Gail Kim In late 2008, Gail Kim made the bold decision to leave behind TNA in favor of returning to WWE. Kim was a mega star in TNA and her matches against Awesome Conga arguably amongst the most influential women's matches in wrestling history. Kim returning to WWE at the time in which women were barely given substantial storylines on WWE TV and if they were on TV at all, it was usually for nonsensical segments or matches that didn't give an ounce of credibility to the women's roster. Kim had high hopes for a return, but it was sadly doomed from the start. Kim's initial presentation was strong, however it didn't take long for WWE to completely forget Kim was even signed to the company and she would barely be featured. Kim discussed her disastrous return to WWE during an interview with 411 Wrestling. 
When I went back, I did clear my path in terms of how I felt, and I really was optimistic. And at the time, I remember, because it was past the diva search and all that stuff, that kind had already long gone, and they were starting to have the women wrestle again. And so I felt very positive, and I was like, okay, I'm stronger, I'm wiser, I have more experience under my belt. And I've done this stuff with Awesome Kong, so it did build more confidence. And so I went back, it was, it was disappointing. I'll say that I never felt like I was used to my potential, you know? They hadn't seen what I'd done in TNA, and that's why they hired me back. And so I would think a logical thing would be to use you to your best ability. And you know what is great about that person, about the talents that the person had? But I never felt like that was happening. Kim's exit for her second run was notable as she decided to eliminate herself from a battle royal as an act of protest when it came to how the women were treated in WWE. Oh, yeah. She would then quit the company before smartly returning to TNA. Number six. She kind of looked like Tila Tequila on that, like there. But I, I, you know what? The interesting thing is when it comes to these women wrestlers, I always the way that WWE is now, which it's in a really good place. I'm not gonna say it's 100% perfect, but I really love it right now. I always wonder what a lot of the women back in like the diva era, things like that. How would they look if they were booked properly during this era? Like it, I think a lot of the women that were good back then, women who didn't even have a chance, would look great nowadays. But you know, that's just. That's just me wondering about that. I don't know if you guys think about that too, but do, do some of you guys watch Impact now, which is now TNA? Let me know in the comment section because I was thinking about doing a little bit more Impact uh, content on this channel, but if enough of you guys watch it, then I'll do it. If not, then I'll just leave it as straight uh, WWE. Maybe I'll do a separate channel for like TNA or Impact stuff. TNA stuff, not TNA. When it came to how the women were treated in WWE, she would then quit the company before smartly returning to TNA. Number six, Lord Tensai. Yeah, after he came from New Japan. A huge mistake when they brought back Matt Bloom. Instead of giving Bloom one of his established WWE personas, they decided to give him a gimmick of Lord Tensai. And upon the minute he re-debuted on WWE TV, it was clear that this was never going to work. Fans bombarded Tensai with chants of Alba, and despite the negative chants, WWE continued to push Tensai up the card, and they even had plans to make him a main eventer. Eventually, WWE realized that the Tensai character this was, was never going to take off, and Tensai was quickly relegated to the role of a comedic act. Number five, Eva Marie. That's crazy. From bro. the moment it was reported that WWE had re-signed Eva they're gonna Marie, put, they're going to put the Michelin Man in a uh, <laughs> in a brick dancing red jumpsuit with a with a Kango hat. What are they thinking, bro? The collective response from fans was, "Why?" Eva's first yeah. run in the company was met with negative reviews as even though she had heel heat, her in-ring work wasn't at the level needed for the main roster. When she returned, fans were hoping that Eva would have been able to improve somewhat, but she was arguably even worse. I don't Eva believe that people was hoping that she would improve. I was, they, I think people were hoping, they, they didn't understand why WWE brought her back and they were hoping that this time around, it, it, there was a justification for them bringing her back. It wasn't more, it, of course they wanted her to improve, but they were just like, Okay, WWE, you got to show us why she's back. It wasn't like in the best interest of Eva, but it just like, you got to justify us seeing this girl on the screen again. I didn't really hate her that much, but I, I agree with everyone else. She wasn't that great, so. Chess matches during the run, including a critically panned SummerSlam match with former women's champion Alexa Bliss. It's hardly a surprise that her run was a total failure, and Eva claims that there's even a chance that she could return to WWE in the future, but this certainly shouldn't be at the top of WWE's list of priorities. Well, if you think you got a chance, you better listen. To, you better listen to that Vince McMahon thing, son, bro. Cause you, I don't think they're gonna bring you back. I just, I don't, I don't hate her. I wish she has the most success in the world. But I think people like Eva Marie and um, what's the other girl name? Um, what's the other one name? I'm, I'm not thinking her name. I keep think, I keep thinking of her her different name. But um, dang, the blonde, the blonde girl that that got released, the one that's doing like the coffee shops and stuff like that. Why am I drawing a blank right now? Lacey Evans. Lacey Evans. What is wrong with me, bro? Kurt Angle. Our fans were elated when Kurt Angle finally returned to WWE in 2017, but there was a major issue when it came to Angle during his final run in the company. The issue with Angle's return was that due to a long and documented history with injuries, Angle wasn't in a position to have five-star classic matches. Yeah. Whilst Angle started off as Raw General Manager, it didn't take long for him to transition into a wrestler once again. Angle's matches with AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, and the infamous Baron Corbin matchup failed to deliver, and it was evident that Angle was ready to retire. But in order to combat this, WWE should have either kept Angle as a Raw GM in a non-wrestling role, or they should have added limited to matches in order to keep Angle's aura and star power intact. 
Number they weren't going to stop him. Scott you saw his Steiner. Joe Rogan uh, in interview. 2002, he was going to do it regardless. Signed Scott Steiner. And judging by Steiner's initial reaction at the Survivor Series, there was a definitive buzz surrounding his return. Even though Steiner was a big deal in WCW, the late 2002 landscape of WWE was vastly different. Steiner had drop foot syndrome, and this limited his ability to even have passable matches, and his world title matches with Triple H in 2003 were unbelievably bad. Steiner's second run being a colossal failure was ultimately WWE's error. It was widely reported that WWE were fully aware that Steiner had drop foot, and how on earth they expected him to have world title level matches with his issue is yeah. anyone's guess. Number 2. Ronda Rousey when Rousey returned to WWE in 2022, fans hoped for the same, but something was missing. The fire Rousey had in her initial run had disintegrated, and it was as if she was going through the motions. Rousey's feuds with Charlotte Flair, Liv Morgan, and even Shayna Baszler all fell flat. She went from being the biggest name on the roster to barely being mentioned on TV, as fans just stopped caring. And number one, Batista. They went through that one Batista quick. Batista in 2014 <laughs> couldn't have come at a worse time. WWE fans had firmly chosen Daniel Bryan as the top babyface in the company. However, yeah. WWE wanted this to be Batista. When Batista returned, the fans outright rejected everything he did. This ruined all of WWE's plans and it was completely short-sighted of them not to have prior foresight that this would have occurred. It took WWE some time, but they would eventually turn the WWE legend back into a heel, which was the right move, but it was too little, too late. Speaking about this less than stellar return during an appearance on Lillian Garcia's podcast, Batista stated, It was horrible. I tried not to take it personally, but I really did, and it hurt because it's hard to tell people that you want to be there for the right reasons, but they don't want to hear it. They don't care why you're there. They just don't want you there. I felt I was where I wanted to be, and we were pushing the personal stuff aside. I was kind of getting past that, but I had to leave. I had to go promote Guardians of the Galaxy. I was obligated to do that. But they have it, folks. Ten Can you dollars. imagine if they didn't do that? If they, they kept, they didn't turn them heel? Like, I think about this stuff sometimes, too. When it comes to the way that WWE or any promotion books somebody, people don't understand. If it's not booked properly or you leave a bad taste in fans' mouth, it can ruin stuff for you in the future. Like, if Batista was booked to, to stay as the way he was and it overshadowed Daniel Bryan, some fans not understanding the booking concept will have hatred towards him. And every time they see his face, it's going to remind them of that moment that they hated WWE and hated him for being a part of that, which means in the future, if people see him come back, people are not going to want to see him anymore. So that could possibly happen. I mean, look at Jinder Mahal. A lot of people hate him for people booking him to be champion. He can't help it. He's just doing what he's being told. So at the end of the day, yeah, these were some crazy, <laughs> crazy uh, people that came back in the most disastrous situations in the world. But like I said, for Kurt Angle, I mean, for Kurt Angle, if you listen to his interview, all the injuries that he suffered through, at the end of the day, he was going to end up wrestling one way or another. There was no way you're going to stop that. And the Scott Steiner thing, it still doesn't make any sense. Someone with drop foot coming in to wrestle and to put them at the top to become a champion. It's like telling me, yo, we want you to be, we make, we want you to win the Daytona 500. We're going to put you in a car without a steering wheel. Like, what, what am I supposed to do with that? I don't know. But anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comment section. If there's some wrestlers that they left off this list, let us know in the comment section. Thank you guys so much for watching. Salute.